Today, we have two indictments for murder for both the Harris County Sheriff's deputy and her husband. Um, I guess <laughs> I'm a little shocked at the speed at which this has happened. Uh, and I, I feel like that this is somewhat outside the norm. I know there was a huge protest. And as I was, I was talking with uh, Sean and our producer before the show, that was one of the biggest protests I've ever seen um, for a, a murder case. I think there were a lot of people who were probably surprised at how long it did take. <clears throat> they were surprised that uh, Mr. Thompson was not arrested on the scene that night right. as a result, uh, which is what would have happened in most normal instances. There would have been an arrest at the spot, gone to jail, uh, had some kind of charges filed, made a bond, and then worried about whether to get indicted later, which might have taken a month or two or three or more. Correct. Yeah. I, I, Do you think that the fact that she was a that there was a sheriff deputy involved that caused a delay in anyone being arrested and or uh, charges being brought? Well, I think it may have uh, delayed the initial arrest because the officials at the scene may have said, look, we've got to tread carefully. This is the kind of thing that can backfire in our own department if we don't do it right. But I think then once you get past that hurdle, it may have expedited the process a little bit, particularly to the grand jury, because we have a situation where the public, uh, at least a, a, some members of the public, are outraged and there is a public accountability issue. So uh, that, that's just the general way that I see it for now. So let me take, uh, for purposes of the show, let me take the prosecution standpoint. It's murder. This guy got on top of him, choked him, killed him, and then his wife came and assisted or aided and abetted in the murder of this young man. He's guilty of murder and should be prosecuted. What says you? Oh, this is the yeah, exactly. <laughs> initial response. Where the fun almost, begins, right? It's almost too easy. <laughs> yeah. A couple of things. First, Kim Og was very expressed today in saying that this is nothing more than a finding of probable cause. It's not a finding of, of beyond a reasonable doubt. It's not a finding that has been tried before a jury. There's been no cross examination or confrontation. It's simply the evidence presented to the grand jury that thought there was probable cause for these charges. That's first. Second, Despite the charges being filed, there is still a presumption of innocence. And no matter how much we want to ignore that in practice these days, that is the way it should be. It's a fundamental tenet of our justice system. And, and these two people are still presumptively innocent, the grand jury finding notwithstanding. The, the bigger picture, picture at this point from my standpoint is, all we know is what bits and pieces we've seen in the media. And, and nobody should be making judgments about guilt or innocence based on media reports that are, and no offense to my friends in the media, always incomplete and often wrong.